the innovations nowadays are such that it opens new horizons in uh, our practices. Now, what I want to ask both of you, uh, Bobby and David, uh, how did it change your practice and what is the patient's reactions to this kind of dynamic too? Uh, yeah, so, you know, I mean, it's changed our practice, uh, like I said earlier. Uh, well, first and foremost, Bob, great job. Uh, beautiful cases. Uh, and, of course, been doing this uh, for a very long time. And one of my mentors, along with Ziv. Uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, it's changed our practice in the same day, emer yeah, same day emergency with implant placement. Uh, patients that are in need of implants that are already in edentulous sites that we can tell them, would you like your implant in the next 15 minutes? Uh, once we get the scan, most of them are like, what are you talking about? I thought I was just coming in for a consult. Uh, so that's, that's really accelerated uh, our use of the system. And like I said, it's, it's definitely been a game changer. As a younger clinician, uh, I've marketed it as a way that something that no one else is doing in my town uh, with the Navident system. And for me, it's modern technology and my contemporaries that's what we love we love our iphones and we love technology if it's uh for implant surgery if it's for 3d printers if it's on the restorative side but a lot of the contemporary clinicians and patients they love the technology uh and it's allowed me to kind of grow my practice uh utilizing newer uh in the newest technology um for me, this is part of some of the other new technologies that we've mentioned before, like the ground dentin and the PRF. I think when you mention to patients the guided navigation, the real-time 3D imagery that we can get and put to use right in front of them, they see us not only as dentists but on the forefront of scientific technology and they see that we're doing things that no dentist has ever even mentioned to them, and they see us as even ahead of most of the physicians they're dealing with. And it really puts us in a different light in their eyes and really opens them up to more treatment. And I think it's a phenomenal thing that, like David said, that even for someone who's not a young clinician, it really makes patients really excited about what we have to offer them. Now, what about the simplicity um, of using me, the again, system? The, as I showed the software, it takes literally a couple of minutes to plan a case. And when Beth and Jason were in our office, we did four cases. We placed eight implants in two days. And... That was on a Wednesday and Thursday, and Monday, without them, we did one case with a three millimeter ridge, and next to it, a case, the site had four millimeters to the sinus, both with Densa, as taught to me by you, with guided navigation surgery. So it's very, very easy. It's a very simple learning curve. You know, any of us who are used to using computers are used to not looking directly at a patient. We do so much of our work off mirrors that once you get the body position right, it's easy to look on the screen and very simple to incorporate into your routine. Yeah, I, w I would second that. Uh, initially, you know, I mean, Jason and Beth came down. Uh, we had some cases. And we sort of picked it up right away. I was fortunate enough to be trained uh, in Rome by uh, Dr. Stefanelli, who is a master at uh, Navident. And you pick it up. It's like anything in dentistry that, you know, I mean, it takes you a few times to, to get, get grasp of it and get behind it. But once it clicks, it's, it's just like anything else. Uh, you know, I mean, I remember the first time I put an implant in in my AGD, I had no idea what I was doing. I was scared. Same thing with the Navident. I'm looking at a computer screen. I'm not looking at the patient. And, you know, I mean, by the third, fourth, fifth case, didn't even, didn't even think that I was uh, looking at a computer screen anymore because it was just so simple, simple 
and that I knew it was going to be accurate and precise because I knew where the drill was going without even looking uh, at the patient. Nice. Now, what about what are your thoughts about even making it simpler by going flapless? If it's so accurate, I I I haven't done it yet, but that's partially because I'm still building my uh, building my practice. But if if you really do believe in it, which I do, and that's one of the next things that we're moving on to is flapless surgery. Uh, and you believe in it, there's no reason why you can't do this flapless, exactly what you said, Ziv, because you know where that drill's going. Uh, you know everything uh, in a three-dimensional manner based on your CBCT and your uh, and the drilling protocols that you could do this flapless and have uh, an even e easier surgery for the patient. I still like to add a little PRF to well, my implant. Hard to do that flaplessly. Well, that's right. But still, you can coat your implant yeah. with your magic stuff and then <laughs> insert true. it in. Any questions from the audience? Well, as far as I can... Yeah, any other questions from the audience? Okay, there is, there is another... There is a question... And I want to address this question to both of you. Uh, what about full edentulous cases? So we, I know they're office, working on it. I haven't started with it yet. We haven't, we haven't started with it, but our uh, friends in Chicago, George Mandelaris has done a few cases, uh, full arches, and as far as I know, it, they've been successful. Okay, now there is another question from uh, Christopher uh, Husser. Over a five-year period, what is your success rate uh, from retainment of an implant? Retainment, okay. I mean, I've been using the system even before the trace in place for about a year, and I'm still at 100%. Uh, okay, now there is a question from uh, David. Uh, Anson from LA, how much time is saved in a typical case using Navident? It, it depends how you look at it. If uh, you're going to order a surgical guide, it can save you, you know what I mean, two weeks. Uh, or, you know what I mean, it can save you a couple days because you can do it right then and there. Uh, but as for actual surgical time, it's comparable. It might be a few minutes longer because yeah. you got to ca we calibrate after every drill, but nothing. I mean, we book out an hour for our, all of our implants, so it's and we it doesn't take an hour uh, to do any of our uh, modalities. You, Bob? Um, I think for single tooth, it's about the same. For single tooth aesthetic, it's a little shorter. For multiple teeth, it's definitely shorter, probably about 20 to 30 percent shorter, because it's just so much easier to parallel everything in the software. Uh, also, for the let's call it the Versa Cresta lift cases, I find it much much quicker because you can see in the software right when you're approaching the floor of the sinus. Yeah, that's great. And we are really looking forward to be able to trace everything both with the piezo and with the Versa drills as well. And that yes. will be a big change. Yeah. Any other questions? Um. Yeah, Sam, I think we answered your fully edentulous case. Yeah, there are a lot. Yeah, there are more questions regarding edentulous uh, cases, and we do know that uh, the company is working on solutions for fully edentulous. So that covers that. Uh, well, as always, 
everyone is asking how much you should charge for an implant, but you know, that's <laughs> up to anyone to decide. Uh, I always say that I don't charge for the implant, I charge for the treatment. True. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Um, one thing, uh, Beth, I know you're going to mention about the, again, about the November course. I just mm -hmm. got an email. The organizers for that said anyone who signs up for our hands-on will get free tuition to the rest of the meeting. So, okay. Well, I have that. Um, let me bring that up if we're if they're if we're through with the Q and A. Uh, let me just, just answer David's there. question. David answered the tracer is not attached to the patient. There is a well, there's a, there's a tracking device that's attached to the patient. So the mandibular one that I showed that is in Dave right in the picture that you're seeing now is actually bonded to one of the mandibular piece, one of the mandibular teeth, just with a piece of wire that's not etched. And if we're working in the maxilla, it's basically on the patient with sunglasses. And then everything else is just mobile and in your hand. Okay, sorry, go ahead, Beth. Oh, we have one more. What is the smallest field of view for the CVCT? I, I use full mouth. I never go smaller than that. We you only never use, know what you're going to find. Yeah, we only use full mouth in our office. I think Ito is typing in a comment. For those of, that, those of you that don't know, Dr. Bermanis, Ito Bermanis is our clinical director. Okay, his comment is, uh, let's see. It is, it, yeah, so it's possible to use a small field. But like you say, most use the um, larger field of view from what I've seen. Mm 